Hi everybody, thanks for stopping by Peace Garage. Now in this video we're going to talk about Loctite. Now someone made a comment on a previous video and said they can't learn without balloons. So here's a balloon, a blue balloon. And it happens to be one of the colors that Loctite comes in. It comes in four different colors, green, purple, blue, and red. They're all used for very different purposes, and there are millions of numbers of Loctite. And what I want to do here is help you understand the difference between the colors, when you should use them, how to properly use them, and maybe a trick or two that might help you out in a pinch. All right, first a brief history. In 1953, there was an American professor working at Trinity College, and he was trying to develop these anaerobic thread-locking sealants. We're going to talk about what anaerobic means in a couple minutes. But he was trying to develop these thread locking sealants to prevent the loosening of fasteners under vibration. And by 1956, Loctite was officially being sold through his company, American Sealants. And in 1963, American Sealants officially changed its name to Loctite. Now in 1964, Loctite started marketing cyanoacrylate adhesives, which we know as Loctite, which is just a repackaged product made by the Tennessee Eastman Chemical Company. They were selling it at the time as Eastman 910, which we now know as Superglue. That was actually developed way back in 1942. So Loctite added Superglue or cyanoacrylate adhesive to their product line. And by 1997, Loctite was sold to the German company Henkel. Ever since then, Loctite has been the flagship brand for Henkel, who also makes other household and construction products like adhesives, sealants, and epoxies. So what does anaerobic mean? Anaerobic means absence of air. That means that Loctite's, super glues, any type of anaerobic adhesive is not going to cure unless you remove the air. For example, I could take this bolt and put a ton of Loctite on there and let it set. Loctite cures usually in 24 hours. If I leave it just like this, it's never going to cure because it's out in the air. It's not going to cure until you take a fastener, like this nut, you put it on, and the air that's missing between the nut and the bolt is going to make that Loctite cure. Now incidentally, this is way too much Loctite. Don't ever use that much Loctite. It's just a waste of money. As a matter of fact, all you need is a little bit of Loctite around the diameter of the fastener where the nut's going to end up, or if you're putting it in a blind hole, just a little bit on the lead thread. Now here's the most important thing I can tell you about Loctite. Loctite is not a primary method of retention. It's a secondary method of retention. And what I'm about to say is probably going to generate the most controversy and the most comments. But when you build an engine or work on a car, you should never need to use any Loctite. The only bolts that I put Loctite on are the cam bolts, the bolts that go on the cam gear, and I use a red Loctite. And I really don't even need that, but I kind of do that out of habit. Now the reason I say that you don't need any Loctite is because your primary method of retention the main way that a fastener stays in place is torque. When you apply torque, you apply torque for a reason. And that torque is designed to hold the fastener in place. Now, should there be vibration, or you put it in a situation where uh, the, the fastener could be exposed to vibration, you want a secondary method of retention. That is what you're using Loctite for. You're putting it there in case the primary method of retention fails. If vibration, causes your torque to loosen and causes the fastener to come loose, you want that Loctite in the threads to prevent the fastener from backing out. That's what it's used for. So don't think you're just going to take some Loctite, put it on some threads, put things together, and you're never going to have to worry about it. You have to make sure that you're putting the fasteners together, torque them properly, and you'll never need Loctite. But in the case where you're worried that it might see some vibration and you're worried about it falling apart, Choose your Loctite, and this is what you do. Loctite comes in four basic forms. You have the liquid, like I put on the bolt. The semi-solid formulas, like the pastes and the gels, they're more pocket-friendly. They're ideal for overhead applications. And finally, the tape. The tapes are really pocket-friendly, and they're for controlled applications. And the great thing about the tape is it can be pre-applied for several days before you assemble it. Now, one important thing that most of us tend to overlook, Loctite has an expiration date. And the general rule of thumb is it's good for two years from the date of manufacture, which is very difficult to find, or which is more practical for all of us, it's good for one year from when you open it. So all that Loctite you have out in your garage right now that's been out there for years, just go and throw it away because it's expired. Now, the formula 
or what is in Loctite and why it works is really a big mystery. It's a secret. We're never going to find out what it is, but I can share this with you. I've been to the factory in Dietikon, Switzerland, where they make Loctite, and when you walk through the factory, there are these big vats of Loctite that are like cooking. And I asked the person who was hosting me, why does it smell sweet? It, it, it smelled like a candy factory in there. And he slipped, I don't know if he slipped, but he told me one of the ingredients in Loctite is saccharin. Saccharin is an artificial sweetener. And if you've ever, like me, accidentally tasted Loctite, it tastes sweet. It tastes sweet like candy. Now, don't go and taste it. I'm not giving you permission to say taste it and verify it's sweet, but just take my word for it. And if you've done it, you know what I mean. You get a little bit on your hands and you wipe your lip or something like that and you taste it, it's sweet. Now when you go and buy Loctite, you're only going to have a couple choices because they're not going to carry every number available and there are hundreds of numbers of Loctite, even for blue. If you want just blue Loctite, there are many numbers of Loctite, 241, 242, 273, there's all kinds of numbers and they're all specific applications. But the most common colors to us are blue and red. Blue being removable, red being non-removable, which is not entirely true, but we'll talk about that when we talk about applications for each color. So you go and buy Loctite. Whether it's made by Hanko, Loctite, or by Permatex, they're both the same, blue and red. Now if you're going to buy some blue, you want removable, the 243 will be the most common because 243 is used for oily surfaces or where oil is present. It also comes 242, which is in applications where there won't be any oil present whatsoever. And the red is 271, that's a more common number for the red. And there's Loctite 592, which is more of a thread sealant for NPT threads, and that's more like a plumber's putty or a pipe dope where you don't want to have leaking for NPT threads. Next is the strength. How strong or how permanent do you want it to be? The low strength or the purple is ideal for fasteners less than a quarter of an inch and it's easily disassembled using regular hand tools. The medium strength blue, this is designed to be removable with standard hand tools on bolts or fasteners one quarter to three quarters of an inch. Red Loctite is designed to deliver high strength on fasteners from one quarter of an inch to three quarters of an inch. And for removal, it may require localized seat up to 550 degrees. And with standard hand tools, you can disassemble it while it's hot. All Loctite is designed for metal to metal fastening, but you can use Loctite 425 if you're assembling plastic to plastic or plastic to metal. Now here's where I'm gonna teach you a trick and we're gonna talk about the last color, green. Green Loctite is a wicking Loctite and it's a medium strength. It's designed for fasteners that are already pre-assembled. So if you're an electrician and you have a panel with a bunch of screws on it and you don't want them to come loose or you have an assembly on your car or something like that you don't want it to come loose but you already have it assembled, you can use a wicking Loctite and green is a wicking Loctite. That means that the, when you put the Loctite on near the head of the fastener on the threads, it's going to be drawn into the threads, and as it's drawn into the threads, it'll stay there and cure. It's a wicking Loctite. Now, here's your tip. Let's say you don't have any wicking Loctite, and you want to wanna prevent something from falling apart or coming loose. You can make your own wicking Loctite. All you need to do, let's say you have some blue on hand. Take some blue Loctite, put it in a small container, and mix in some IPA or isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. Mix it together. The alcohol will act as a wicking agent. So when you put it on your pre-assembled fastener, the alcohol is going to draw the Loctite into the threads. Now this method can be used with all colors of Loctite, the purple, blue, and the red. And the cool thing about it is once the alcohol evaporates out, there's no residue left behind, and all you have left in the joint is the Loctite. Saves you money if you don't want to run out and try and find some green Loctite. You make your own wicking Loctite. I hope that helps you out. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.